pop, shoot it. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. What's up guys? Welcome back. Another video coming to you guys from Clear Lake. I've actually been out and down on the Delta a little bit lately uh, doing a lot of punching and stuff like that. Teaching clients how to punch. Um, it's been fun. A lot of, you know, just missed opportunities here and there of some big fish, but that comes with learning guys. So like if you want to learn how to punch, uh, it's going to take time and practice and you gotta get out there and just do it, right? So that's why like, I've had some clients booking me just to kind of try to teach them right, you know, the right ways of doing it and how I do it. And, um, and just trying to learn what the bite feels like and just all the little nuances that go into punching. So that's basically what I have been doing. But sorry, I got off on a little rant. This video is a little bit different. Um, gonna be doing another technique specific video for you guys. And um, lately I've been fishing this bait quite a bit out here on Clear Lake. Just messing around with it, uh, mainly because we've had a lot of grass growth on the lake, and I got tired of throwing a frog. <laughs> if that makes any sense. Uh, just because guys are throwing it, and you know, I hate forcing a frog bite, so I've been switching things up, and, and the wind this year has been pretty crazy, so uh, that's why I have opted to this bait. Um, and that bait is the swim jig. And actually, very specifically, it's the uh, one of my buddy's swim jigs. It's a snag em and bag em custom tackle or custom baits uh, swim jig. He also makes a lot of other jigs and stuff like that and, and also a bunch of saltwater stuff. I think predominantly he makes a lot of saltwater stuff. So for all you saltwater guys that may or may not be watching these videos, um, hit him up. But also some of you bass guys, you know, he makes pretty good jigs. Uh, the swim jigs are phenomenal and you guys will see why here in this video of what I put some of his jigs through and what they've held up to um, is why they, what makes them great. Um, and then I'm going to go into kind of where I throw swim jigs, how I throw them, and how I've been throwing them lately uh, out here on Clear Lake and just the things like that, my tackle, all that stuff. So stay tuned guys and uh, see how I throw them. All right guys, so first things first, what do I throw my swim jigs on? Um, this is a Fitzgerald rod, 7.3 heavy. It's actually my frog rod. Um, some guys may not prefer that. Some guys want a little bit more tip. I like to hit these fish and get them to the boat as fast as possible because first of all, these fish work wizardry. Um, I'll throw in a clip now of a fish I lost, actually just now. <laughs> So you guys saw that fish, that fish hit it right when it hit the water and was peeling. I mean, I'm trying to catch up to this fish um, and I am like reeling as fast as I can. It's going over to the right and all of a sudden it's coming towards the boat and it still got off, right? So I'm trying to catch up to these fish. So usually when a fish is eating a swim jig, it's in a very predatorial mood in my opinion. It's feeding, it's up there doing whatever it can do to, to get whatever it's feeding on. And, I'll get into what I think they're feeding on. But, so that's why it's important to have a good rod, first of all, to hit them, hit those fish and catch up to them, get get to the boat or get them in the boat. Secondly, and most importantly, is that reel. Fast gear ratio reel, right? 
And that's part of catching up to them, right? You hit them, you want to catch up to them as fast as possible and, you know, get them in the net or boat flip them, right? And to boat flip them, I'm running 20 pounds straight fluorocarbon. This is P-Line Tactical. Um, I run this straight fluorocarbon because even though I don't think they can see my line too much, especially in this water right now in Clear Lake, um, I still like fluorocarbon because it's somewhat clear, right? Uh, especially even when you get up to the 20 pound range. And 20 pounds strong enough for me to just boat flip in most situations, um, as long as I don't have a nick in my line. And then the jig itself, this is actually the color I've been throwing recently. It's kind of like a black blue or green pumpkin blue uh, color right there. It's got a black and blue head on it. And then these eyes are like red and black. But this is, uh, once again, like I was talking about earlier, this is a Snag'em and Bag'em custom uh, baits jig, swim jig. This weed guard's very fine. I like how it's a very uh, fine weed guard, like um, soft, I should say. So when I do get bit, I can, it just kind of cripples down like really easily uh, to get to that hook. And the hook is a, is a very sharp, strong mustad hook. Uh, I'm gonna be talking to them and maybe potentially getting some owner hooks put on these. Uh, which would be for all you owner guys out there. I consider myself an owner guy as well. Uh, I really like owner more than mustad, but these hooks are great. I mean, so far I've had no problems with them, except for when I've caught a lot of fish on them. So if you guys take a look here, where's it at? Here we go. This is the jig. It's caught about 150 fish out here on Clear Lake uh, so far. And that hook bent out right there, that's from a big fish. <laughs> um, not sure what happened, it just bulldogged me and bent me out. And that's what how my jig came back to me and my trailer was actually ripped off. It was the same trailer as, as what I got on this jig. Um, it was a River to Sea D Walker in the 120 size. And it's, uh, I think it's like a black and, black and red or like ghost, I don't know. It's a weird black red color. It's one of the only colors that look like this. So um, I'll link it below. Um, but yeah, this swim jig fished at night during the day everything and it caught a lot of freaking fish i mean i mean just estimating here it's, it had to be over 150 fish uh just just guesstimating just over from night fishing to daytime uh, in the evening stuff like that i mean skirts all ripped up weed guards kind of all torn up i mean i'm surprised the skirts even still on there but it held up to a lot of fish and i should have just retired it before that big one bit me out but I was honestly just really trying to see how long those or how far those jigs or these jigs will go and they'll go plenty far <laughs> so um so that's that that's the setup once again this is a shimano corrado uh eight to five and um 20 pound 40 like i talked about and a fitzgerald rod 7.3 heavy uh stunner hd that's one of my favorite frog rods and a, and a pretty good uh swim jig rod as well still messing around i might find a new swim jig rod out there that's better but i like these fitzgeralds because they're so durable um, i'm sure there's better rods out there um, that are going to be able to hold up to those fish and and let them jump all around and, and they'll keep them pinned but uh those rods break on me whenever i'm doing this crazy grass fishing punching just all this like heavy type of fishing like really aggressive type of fishing i break a lot of crap i break my rods i break my guides these Fitzgeralds hold up. That's why I fish them. And yeah, I may lose a few fish here and there, but at least I'm not breaking a rod every freaking time I go fishing, right? Um, so let's get into how I'm fishing these, right? I'll be throwing in some clips here of kind of just some fish catches and stuff. And hopefully I'll, I'll you know, I'll put in a little bit more to it, a couple casts so you guys can see what I'm doing um, to get visual reference on what I'm talking about here, right? But yeah, I try to get this little patch and then that little corner too. Okay. Oh, geez. oh, okay, wow. never mind. Okay, so they are here, dude. It just hit right at the boat. That is awesome. So there is fish here. Good ones. Yeah. I think we should stick to the swim jig. That's thin. Yeah. I don't know. We either or. We just strategically get it out of the algae. Yep. You just got to get it out of the algae. Yeah. Oh, yeah.
appreciate it. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. But basically what I'm doing, I'm getting it out there, whipping it out there, and I'm I'm letting it sink mostly to bottom if I don't have grass, right? Like I'm over here, I'm at Rattlesnake Island. There's a lot of rock around. So I'm gonna be like, just kind of letting it sink to bottom and just reeling it, creeping it on the bottom. And every once in a while doing that, that quick twitch that kind of gets it up off bottom and then gets it back down again and then just keep creeping. And a lot of times they're just thumping it against bottom. Um, or a lot of times you'll see in some of these clips, I'll go like that and I'll just get wrecked. Like, I mean, classic, like you just make it look like it's fleeing away and all of a sudden they just lash out, like they're following it or something and you just make it look like it's about to get away and they just eat it. So that's typically how I'm, I'm fishing my swim jigs um, around rock and maybe grass mixed in. If I'm fishing grass, just grass and I'm trying to keep it kind of in that grass and, and stuff like that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna point my rod tip at it and I'm gonna, as soon as I get in that grass, I'm gonna really kind of rip it out, right? I'm gonna get my rod tip going and I'm just gonna pop it free of that grass. And when it pops free of those grass patches is typically when you get hit. It's a reaction bite. Um, I'm sure you guys have seen videos on it before. Guys talking about getting fish to react rather than just feed, right? Uh, that reaction is what gets big fish to bite in a lot of situations. And so ripping it out of that grass or popping it out of those rocks is how you get really big bites on this bait. Um, and that's basically the two type of, types of ways I like to fish it. I will fish it a little bit more subsurface at times, especially when the grass hasn't grown up yet. Um, and just kind of fish it right underneath the, the surface but on top of that grass, if that makes any sense, and just run it over the top of them. Um, that's kind of like a delta thing, just because delta fish like to do, they like to eat things when the grass is just under the surface and they just freaking, they love when things run over the top of that grass. And so that's replicatable, I mean, everywhere, right? Uh, so that's where I'll, I'll, I'll do that most time in the springtime, you know, post spawn or during the spawn to do that and catch fish. Um, what do I think a swim jig's imitating? I mean, there's a lot of different stuff a swim jig's imitating in my mind. It could imitate uh, another bass, uh, a hitch on Clear Lake. I mean, um, crawdads even on the bottom when you're fishing around the rocks. I mean, even though it's got a paddle tail, boot tail on it, these fish, I mean, I don't think they care too much, man. Like if it's doing things right, they're gonna hit it. Um, and if it's right there with what they're eating, like let's say there's a bunch of crawfish down there and you got this thing just ticking rocks going across the bottom, they're gonna take a shot, they're opportunistic. But nine times out of 10, I feel like a swim jig imitates a bluegill, um, the best at least. And that's just my opinion on it. You know, some guys may not agree with me, but whatever. Mainly I, I believe that because um, swim jigs excel in my mind around the bluegill spawn. So when the, you know, when the bass are just getting off beds, these bluegill are pushing up, water temp's like 70 degrees, and these bluegill are just, you know, hot and heavy, right? They're just all over up in the shallows and stuff, and a lot of the same areas that the bass spawned in, those bluegill are spawning. And so some of those really big bass that are trying to recover from the spawn are just wrecking bluegill, man. Like, and so a swim jig is just a perfect imitator, ripping it out of that grass like a fleeing bluegill or even a bluegill maybe chasing baby fry, a bass fry or something. Um, that's what it could imitate as well. It just imitates a lot of different things, so. Oh, weight, let's go into weights a little bit here. So I talked about where I throw them, like rock and, and grass and all that stuff. And I told you I throw them a half ounce, or I throw a half ounce majority of the time. 
because most of the time I can rip a half ounce free of that grass pretty easily. But like up here on Clear Lake, it, it, get, it starts getting thick about this time of year. It's July right now and that grass is really thickening up. So I'm actually gonna be downsizing here to a 3 8 uh, mainly so I can get it in that grass and I can rip it free way easier and it doesn't like really sink down in that grass when I let it sit or when I cast it out or whatever, right? I want it to just get in the grass but be able to rip free easier to get those reaction bites. And that's kind of the only time I'll throw that 3 8 over the half. Uh, all the rest of the time I'm throwing the half just to get it in the rocks and all that crap, like I throw a half a lot. Um, but yeah, so that's that. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys are looking to book a trip, let me know. Um, I have availability for August and September um, for the Delta and Clear Lake mostly. But yeah, guys, that's about it. I'll catch you guys on the next one. See ya.